Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to have a young Indian, but also an expert. She's an expert in water engineering. And right now we have with us Deepshika Devi. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Deepshika. Okay, thank you, Professor Matsu, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this VidPet. I'm very grateful and thankful to you for approaching me to be one of uh, a young scholar to talk about my or express my journey. Uh, I was uh, born and brought up in Gohati, Assam, and I did all my education uh, my, from Gohati, right from my schooling to my, uh, to my doctorate. So, so during I did my bachelor's in civil engineering uh, from Guwahati University. So the reason for taking civil engineering is my dad. He persuaded me to take uh, civil engineering. And so I enrolled my name, is, uh, my name in that branch. So um, and during my uh, studies, uh, during my bachelor's time, I had uh, developed a keen interest in uh, hydrology and water resources. And uh, with that, I started uh, like taking water resources as my uh, subject. And uh, one more thing is that uh, flood is one of the major problem of Assam. Okay. Annual, in, yeah, this year also, like uh, most of the reasons of uh, like villages and many reasons of Assam, uh, like a submerged in uh, flood. So, and even in my childhood, I have seen flood, like lots of urban flood happen. So with that motive, I started off uh, taking this uh, as one of my uh, research area. So I tried to study, I wanted to study and I want to do something good for the society through my research. So with that motive, I enrolled my name in master's uh, in Guwahati University in the, uh, with the specialization of watershed management and flood control. So during my master's, I did reservoir operation, one uh, like on flood uh, due to dams. And I my study area is one of the big dam in Assam, that is uh, Lower Subansuri Hydel Project. Uh, but uh, the project is not yet operational uh, due to various is issues. And uh, I'll not go into much details of the socio-political issues. So, and during that time, I also did that catchment characteristic study of that big dam, the reason, and uh, using remote sensing and GIS. And, and I gathered a lot of information regarding that area. And, uh, and, and I have learned a lot on remote sensing and GIS. And even remote sensing and GIS has been uh, widely, is, is in vogue and it isn't widely used in many uh, fields. So it is very necessary. So after that, after completion of my master's, I joined IIT Guwahati as a junior research fellow. And, uh, and my work was mostly to study the morphodynamics of uh, River Brahmaputra and its uh, tributaries, three major tributaries, using remote sensing and GIS techniques. So during this phase, I learned a lot on the fluvial hydrodynamics of the river how the river is changing, how the river, uh, how the river course is changing, the morphometry studies. So all these things I have learned, and uh, and and during this course of time, I also had an opportunity to uh, to have some uh, like uh, collaboration with uh, like uh, teams like Central Water Commissions and Assam Water Resources. So it gave me a lot of uh, information and I was like uh, very, uh, I gathered a lot of information regarding in this field. So um, afterwards, after completion of uh, this project, I enrolled as, uh, as a PhD research scholar from IIT Guwahati in the water resource engineering. So during this phase, I was also a teaching assistant uh, for post uh, postgraduate as well as undergraduates, and uh, and I, and my PhD thesis is mostly on dam induced flood. So I'll just give a brief uh, brief about my research, what I about my PhD thesis and what I did in my PhD. So basically, my uh, study area is Ronganodi Hydroelectric Project. So this project is in Arunachal Pradesh. So 
and my and I uh, did study on these areas. Uh, it is it is in Arunachal Pradesh and the uh, and the downstream areas is in Assam. So right. Assam is is a low lying area. So if there is sudden release from the dam, so the downstream areas get affected. So again, that uh, that uh, dam is an inter what inter basin water transfer hydro project. So like uh, water is diverted to another watershed for power production. So what happened that uh, because of that there are negative impacts in the downstream area. So basically during the lean period, what happened as water is also transferred to the other basin. And uh, the during lean period, uh, there is a decrease in the stream flow in the downstream can be seen. So we went to field uh, in both the flood period as well as during the uh, lean period to that area. And we see that exactly in the same location uh, during the flood period, it was entirely flooded. The downstream areas are entirely flooded. And during the lean period, not at the river is entirely dried up. So this is a real problem. And and because of that, there is no any environmental flow regulation is there in uh, till now for that dam. So what uh, with that motive, we tried to give some management strategies for both the lean period as well as for the flood period. So for the lean period, what we did what we did is that we we targeted one endangered fish species because for fish survival, there should be a minimum amount of water required. Mm -hmm. So we targeted an endangered fish species in that river and we tried to give some decision strategies how much water need to be released as environmental flow during lean period to sustain that fish species. So we did only for one fish species so people can do for other fish species as well. So <laughs> this is one management strategies we uh, that uh, we give we, uh, I and my supervisor. So and during the flood period, what happened uh, because of the sudden release, there is a sudden flooding at the downstream. So there should be a proper dissemination to the downstream areas before the release from the dam. So yeah. that is lacking. So that's why we try to uh, give some uh, management strategies, like uh, we develop an adaptive flood management framework. Suppose like if, the, if we have a good, uh, if we have a very good forecast of the inflow, then how much uh, how much water we can uh, release before the arrival of the peak flood. So with that, we can manage the sum amount. But for that, a proper and a very reliable forecasting system should be required. So we give that type of uh, management strategies and that framework wor working is, uh, that framework is working fine. And uh, this is, and like a, in due course of my PhD, I was also able to publish a few, uh, manuscript and again uh, this is uh, not only uh, from the technical part we have also applied from a practical uh, perspective as well so during that uh, time i had a very uh, good uh, coordination with northeastern electric power corporation limited and we tried to develop uh, a, a, a new uh, real time flood forecasting uh, framework which will incorporate the sensor data. So it will be soon be in operation and it will be in, uh, it will be there in that uh, installation work is going on. So in it, it will soon be in operation and hopefully it will work. And so this is a little bit brief about my work uh, in the PhD work. So yes. my work is mostly on water resources and floods and dams. Yes. So, and currently, I am working uh, in in United States. Uh, in like, I recently joined University of Alabama here. Uh, in April, I joined, and here my work is to um, is to develop large scale flood uh, evaluation for the entire United States. So yeah, I my work has uh, it, it is progressing, and yeah, I'm I'm like uh, the working environment here is very nice. So I'm liking it. Okay. So this is so this is in brief about my um, research, right from my masters to my postdoc, and uh, on personal on personal level, like uh, in due course of time, I have met a lot of people who has uh, supported me in every aspect of life, and they have uh, they have guided me. 
like i'm very thankful to my parents because they have supported me in every every decision that i have made all the decisions that i have made in my life is my own decision but they have supported me in every aspect and uh, and also i learned uh, a lot of things from my supervisors right from my masters to my postdoc and i'm very grateful to my phd supervisor professor kumar sharma from like i have learned a lot of things from him uh, right from management uh, to like asking questions and the and to value the and value the time which is very important and uh, uh, what else i can say that uh, i can give some suggestion to my fellow phd uh, scholars is that uh, yeah phd is a very uh, long journey and it requires a lot of uh, mentally it should be, like you should be mentally strong because it in that phase you have lot of things to do right from uh, manuscript publications and rejection is uh, rejection is also a part and parcel of a phd scholar's life so don't get disheartened with that it's like you should go on publishing and you should go on uh submitting the manuscripts and secondly is that uh uh what else can i say yeah uh in the phd phase you should have a proper consistency if you if you consistently work uh then your goal will be achieved within a short time that's from my personal experience just you should maintain the consistency of uh, your work that is very much important and uh, yeah that's uh, that's all that's that's all that i can say from my personal experience and from my uh, the the people that surrounded me that i gained a lot of uh, support from those people so that's all i let me just ask you that you know you said you were born in gohati and you studied there so you are not really been to other parts of india as such so no. do you feel that there's something missing in your life or do you think it's something doesn't matter how do you feel as a as an assamese this is what i'm asking okay uh i right now and through this journey i have not uh, not that experience that what i am missing i i have not experienced that okay uh i have uh, like uh, i in fact i never tried going going from guwahati this is the first time i am like uh, this is the first time i have come out of my home and in united states actually i have come out of the country yeah and yeah Uh, so i have never like felt anything missing in my life right so okay yeah right. i have fair enough okay uh anything else that you want to tell us i mean how do you find the university in the us oh, okay actually uh, i submitted my thesis in the last year of uh, on september so and then after that uh, uh, the my priority is to work more in i want to do more in research so i want to do in i want i was searching for all all type all types of jobs uh, so but my i want to do, do postdoc that was uh, my priority at that time so i started searching uh, online and i was looking for all the jobs which are related to flood because my domain is flood so i was looking for all the, the opportunities in online regarding flood so i was applying i applied i think uh, 30 to 40 universities and i got call from two universities uh, but uh, ultimately i joined university of alabama because this domain is similar to mine and that's what uh, that's how i got the most doctoral offer here in university of alabama okay my sort of speculative question okay climate change will make any difference to floods yeah definitely climate change has a uh, it has a huge impact in flooding 
because uh, like recently I read a paper and in that paper, in that manuscript, uh, they, they suggested, they actually, uh, they, uh, they commented that with the increase in the global warming in the near future, so the rate of rainfall is, will also increase. And that rate is, uh, that, is, that will be severe. And because of that, because of that extreme rainfall, flooding will be there. So the problem is going to get worse. Yeah, according to the resources that is going on. So <clears throat> we have to take some steps, right? To yeah. perhaps mm -hmm. understand how much worse, how to deal with it. Okay. All right. So you haven't yet done any work on it. I'm just asking you to speculate, right? Yeah, but that's uh, that's that's a buzzing question actually, because uh, in our research, that climate change has a direct in impact in flooding, direct in impact in environmental, uh, like uh, ecosystem environmental disbalance. So this type of things are there with uh, climate change. So basically, what we do in climate change, we are taking different scenarios. The like there are different scenarios, and we are taking as a extreme scenarios. Or we consider the extreme scenarios, and sometimes we consider uh, like what will be the probability, yeah. how the how the changes will be there, yeah. what changes will be there. So this type of uh, this type of analysis we do, but we don't know. Like uh, deterministically, we don't know like what will be the effect. We do is a scenario based or a, a probabilistic way we do. But yeah, from that analysis, uh, from those resources, they are like commenting that yeah, it, flooding there will be impact in the flooding. Okay, all right, and it's not just Assam that will be affected. You know, even in Kerala there are floods and. Yeah, even uh, yeah that. Uh, that Kerala flood in 2017. Yes. That was a huge flood. That flood was uh, that flood was a combination of both the regional flood as well as the dams also played an important role, crucial role for that flood. So what happened uh, before there was an extreme rainfall event. So before that rainfall actually occurred, the reservoir level were in a much higher position, in a higher level. So when the rainfall occurred. And uh, and and the position of the reservoir level together made it a severe flood, yeah. made it more disaster. Yeah. Because dam induced flood is a combination of both regional flood as well as the flash flood, and because yeah. of that flash flood, the severity also increases. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, anything else? Okay. Uh. Uh, personally, I have a great interest in art and craft, yeah. and uh, I have I I am like uh, I'm I have a deep interest in acrylic painting and digital painting. I do sometimes when there is a laser time, then I do some digital art. So yeah, th those are my favorite pastimes. Okay, wonderful. All right, thank you, Deepshika, for this very uh, you know clear thank exposition. You, of an issue that I know is going to be quite important. It already is, and it will spread to other parts of India as climate change yeah. happens and yes, flooding yes. and all. And so <clears throat> we have to have the expertise uh, to deal yeah. with it, the technical expertise. So I'm really happy to hear that from you. Okay. Thank you very let's, much. Let's end the recording here. I'll be back with another young person or a scholar or a young scholar soon. Till then, bye everybody.